there, there are 20 million light years of space. And that's just what we know about so far. In fact, what we don't know makes all the knowledge mankind has accumulated over the centuries add up to very little. Perhaps there'll always be more mysteries than answers, but then we all love a mystery. We have two more stories for you tonight. Stories of ordinary people, but what they describe is anything but ordinary. The evidence is compelling, but is it convincing? The woman in one of our stories tried to convince a jury when she took her psychic powers to court. We'll bring you their verdict later. First, though, we've launched satellites and space stations hundreds of thousands of miles into orbit. Space probes have got more than 500 million miles away. Now, if we've got all that, some ask, what might another civilization have? Figures show that a UFO, an unidentified flying object, is spotted by someone somewhere in this world every three minutes. Certain areas report many more sightings than others. There have been concentrations of sightings from the Australian bush to the Brazilian rainforest. But in the past few years, nowhere has had more UFO reports than a certain part of Scotland. In the skies around the town of Falkirk over the last couple of years, around 800 UFOs have been sighted. It's a phenomenon which has reached such proportions that anxious locals have called a public meeting. They want to know the truth. What's behind the sudden upsurge? There was a cloud in the sky, pretty low down, and a large revolving lights. It tended to sort of flare up and then dull down again as if a light was turning towards me and then turning away again. Suddenly it started to move away, not very quickly, and then suddenly collapsed in on itself and disappeared. The fact remains, however, that UFOs are real. Of that there is no question, but it is what they are or represent that is the question. Hundreds of people have phoned me regarding strange sightings in the sky. I know these people personally. I mean, they're not going to make uh, stories up like this. I mean, they've actually faced a lot of ridicule and they've showed a lot of great courage coming forward and stating that they've seen something which nobody can define and nobody can give an answer for. Most sightings have been close by Falkirk in Bonnybridge. Once occupied by Romans, later known for its iron foundries, Bonnybridge now has a bizarre new claim to fame. It's been blitzed by UFOs. Ray and Kathy Prosek were driving along the motorway nearby. As they approached a viaduct spanning the road, they say they saw an object the size of a jumbo jet hovering above it. I could see it was triangular in shape. And there was a light at each corner. We passed underneath the viaduct and looking back there, sitting on the other side, was another craft. And it looked like a mirror image, the way they were pointing towards each other. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. Um, so, of course, you automatically think, you know, UFO. Driving home to neighbouring Larbert, Neil Malcolm says he was followed by a ball of light. I got the fright of my life, really. I knew it wasn't anybody's headlights or anything because it just it lit up the full interior of the car. He rushed in to tell the rest of the family. As they went to look, Neil's wife, Lorraine, grabbed her video camera. And I zoomed in and I wasn't sure what I could see. I mean, you know what a helicopter and a plane looked like, it definitely wasn't anything like that. And I had to stop because it disappeared behind the building. Studies of the video have been unable to explain what it shows. Even experts like Malcolm Robinson, who's analysed reports of UFOs for 25 years, are baffled by the wave of sightings. We check with airports, we also check with uh, the local police. And then you also check with uh, meteorological stations to see any flights of weather balloons, etc. Some reports are misidentifications, obviously, of aircraft and the like. But this leaves us with a small residue which is highly unusual and which demand investigation. But the most puzzling UFO case in the area must be the one which happened in these woods near Livingston. It's a case that the police came to treat officially as assault by person or persons unknown. It happened to a forestry worker, Bob Taylor, who was out on patrol checking for stray sheep in the forest. It was a routine task, one he'd done countless times over the years he'd worked there. As usual, there were no sheep, but as he rounded a corner, he discovered something else. 
What the? It's a huge thing with a big round dome, a very dark grey colour, and it had a, a big flange going all the way around. I could see arms sticking out of this flange with what I took to be blades on the top. The two balls came out, two balls, I think they'd be about three feet in diameter with about six spikes. And they came right up beside me. I remember feeling a tug at that time. Bob Taylor can't remember exactly what followed. The next thing he does remember is lying on the ground, dazed and bleeding. Unable to walk and in no condition to drive, he set off for help on his hands and knees. By the time he arrived home, he was in a state of near total collapse. Bob, what happened to you? I need not drink. I'll get you back. He looked quite shocked. And he, he was drained. He was right oh, white. And his face was dirty. Was it the lorry? Did you have a crash? He was attacked. You were attacked? Aye. And he said, I've been attacked. And I said, what with? And he said, a spaceship. And I said, oh, goodness me, there's no such a thing as a spaceship. I'm going to phone the doctor. You must have fell and hurt your head. Bob's wife called his boss, Malcolm Drummond. He went to the forest and he found Bob's abandoned truck. And that wasn't all. In the clearing, he found impressions had been made in the ground. There is no doubt in my mind that um, these marks were made by a perfectly solid, heavier-than-air object. They had been made by um, some machine which had come vertically downwards. I, I think there's no doubt about that. The area was fenced off and police began an intensive search. They found nothing. It was one of the most puzzling cases Detective Inspector Ian Walk has ever come across. I couldn't believe it at first. The ground was soft and there were no signs of the tracks having come from somewhere or having went anywhere. They just seemed to have arrived. Near the caterpillar type tracks were holes in the ground, three inches deep, 40 holes in all. At first I thought they were possibly being made by equipment that would be used by the Forestry Commission uh, but we went to their premises later that day, examined all the vehicles and uh, nothing at all matched. So what else could have caused the marks? One theory begins with the laying of water pipes in the forest and goes on to explain what Bob Taylor saw, a theory developed by science writer Stuart Campbell. He thought he saw a spacecraft, because that was the only logical explanation to him, sitting in a clearing, but it was a magnified image in my opinion, of a, of a planet millions of miles away. But what about Bob's injuries? The theory continues that the sight of the mirage triggered an epileptic fit. It caused him to be paralysed, he couldn't speak, and uh, it, of course he was uh, unable to walk. These are symptoms of that. Was it in the forest? But Bob hadn't suffered from epilepsy before, and those who know him have no reason to doubt him. Bob Taylor was um, a straightforward uh, forester who had worked here for many years, he had no illusions of any kind, and um, he's not the sort of chap who would have uh, invented a story uh, like this. Then there were the rips in the trousers Bob Taylor was wearing. Rips, he claims, were made by probes from the UFO. The trousers were sent to the police laboratories to be put under the scrutiny of forensic expert Lester Nip. There was two sets of uh, damage predominantly, close enough to be considered symmetrical. It's obviously been caused by uh, a lifting action. It's not the sort of action that's caused by a fall. The tear would normally be down the trousers. Certainly the story could fit the bill. That some object or objects had moved across a clearing towards him, uh, attempted to lift him up and, and carry him off. Even to this day, we are completely baffled of one, who assaulted Mr. Taylor, and two, what made these marks on the ground. This is only one of the many local UFO cases which remain unsolved. Some witnesses say they're left with profound after effects, desperate to find a way of coming to terms with seeing something that defies belief. One of the most recent cases has left two local men with an obsession, 
to find out what it was they encountered on a lonely stretch of road through the Pentland Hills. We come back here quite often, looking about with our camera and that. I'm just interested to find out, to see if we can maybe see this again. The craft was bigger than the road. Me and Colin reckon that the craft was about 30 foot wide. We were both very frightened. It has sort of affected my life, seeing something like this. I've never seen nothing ever like it before. Since I've, I've, I've suffered from bad depression, which I never used to do, um, it, it's just always on my mind. I just want to know what happened that night. I didn't really believe in it, UFOs, but this experience has sort of changed my mind. The Scottish UFOs are affecting local people in another way. They're becoming a tourist attraction. A plaque has been put up where Bob Taylor claimed his close encounter in the forest, bringing visitors from near and possibly very far. Medicine has learned many ways to deal with human pain. Consciousness can be wiped out in an instant by powerful anaesthetics. For centuries, Chinese acupuncturists have inserted tiny needles into their patient's skin. Nobody knows how a needle in the ear can prevent back pain, but many Western doctors have come to accept that it can. And hypnosis can be used to paralyze the nerves which carry pain signals. Without painkillers, most modern surgery would be unthinkable. So imagine the reaction of an American doctor whose patient said she wanted him to operate without anything to stop the pain. I'm fine. In almost 35 years as a physician, I have never seen anything like that before. She said she didn't need anesthesia. It just... Sure you want to go through with I'm this? thought of. I blocked out the penny. At about age seven, I discovered that I was psychic. As I grew older, my abilities grew not only stronger, but as I grew, they grew. About 10 years ago, I discovered that I was able to be pain and medication free, never taking any kind of pain pill for anything. I didn't have any pain, I didn't have any swelling, I didn't have any bleeding, plus the ability that I had helped me to heal faster than the average person. Penny Polito calls it her pipeline. Doctors in Florida, where she lives, were skeptical, to say the least, about her claims. But she was so convincing that they agreed to operate to remove a cyst from her arm, with anaesthetic standing by. When I put the knife on her skin, I thought that she would rebel and possibly scream a bit, because it was going to be painful. And she didn't. The few minutes that it took was enough for him to have his shirt wringing wet because he was a nervous wreck. Why? He said, Penny, it's logical. Nobody can have surgery without anesthetic. I'm just looking forward to my vacation, and it's going to be such fun. We go. The anesthetic standing by was never used. To the doctor's amazement, Penny didn't feel a thing. And she went on to have six more operations, operations potentially even more Penny. painful. You have three significant sized cysts all located in a very, very sensitive part of the breast. I can't see any reason in the world why anyone in their right mind would want to do this surgery without anesthesia. I can do it. I can. I've done it before. I've seen many phenomenal things. Nothing compares to this. I imagine the pain would be described as excruciating. In another operation, Penny had to have a toe amputated. I didn't sleep for a week before we did this because I didn't believe it could be done and I was very nervous. But in spite of Dr. Willens' fears, Penny still refused anesthetic. I asked her, did she feel pain? She always told me no. I feel nothing. We cut the skin, we cut deeper into the tissue, and we cut the bone and remove it. After I got the bone out, she says, I want to see what other people feel like. She says, I'm going to pipe out for a minute. He says, oh my God, that's terrible. So could Penny Polito really have been using psychic power to block her pain? A leading psychiatrist who examined her thinks not. When I examined her, I discovered very quickly that this lady was very gifted and she was using 
self-hypnosis. She would go into a trance or hypnotic state quickly and spontaneously, and as a result, turn off sensation to that part of her body. But those who've operated on her disagree. Most people in a hypnotic state are quieter. They lay back and they don't ask too many questions. But she was lively, she was wide awake, she was trying to sit up. She was joking with the staff, she was joking with me, she was telling stories. If not hypnosis, could she have taken something? She showed absolutely no signs of clinical use of any kind of drug. Or could she have a medical condition which made her unable to feel pain? I don't know of any medical condition that blocks out pain. And it's my understanding that she has the ability to block it out, and if she didn't do that, she would feel pain. Penny Polito claims to have other psychic powers too. To thank Dr. Willens for agreeing okay. to operate, she decided to make him a gift. I told him that I would make him a winner at Las Vegas at the gaming tables. And I would share the knowledge that I had with him telepathically. Give me an ace. It's like the bets were placed for me, and whatever I did was absolutely correct. If I needed an eight, the next card was an eight. It was like magic. Hey, blackjack, blackjack. Dr. Willens won several thousand dollars, but surely it was just luck. And I figured, I finally figured out how to win money. So the following week, I went over to the Bahamas and tried the same thing, but just, I didn't win. Give me one more here. If Penny had such powers, though, surely they had much greater potential. It would have benefited all mankind if we could have found out the how and the why then burn victims and cancer patients could have been pain-free, just like me, would have been my gift to mankind. But that wasn't to be. One day, she was shopping in a do-it-yourself store. Ah! Three boards came down and struck me on the head. Are you OK? Are you all right? Annie Polito says she felt pain for the first time in years. It was a shock, but she seemed to recover. She forgot about the accident and went ahead with another operation. But this time, her powers were to fail her. Towards the end of the surgery, I began to experience feelings I shouldn't have. And that was the first indication to me something was wrong. By this time, I realized that the ability was lost and uh, it never came back. It was then that Penny took a step which would make legal history. She took the DIY store to court, claiming damages not just for physical injury, but also for loss of psychic pain-blocking powers. A few days before the trial, the store offered her $17,000 to drop the case. But money wasn't all Penny wanted. I wanted to legally prove that something, no matter what anybody wants to call it, did exist. Court is now in session. Our reconstruction is based on reports of the court case, which began with the DIY store's lawyer making an astonishing request. I do not believe that Mrs. Polito has paranormal powers, but if indeed she does, we would ask that she refrain from using them to mentally invade the minds of the jury. No, Mr. Slock, that's going The judge going refused, but ruled that the jury should reach a verdict on both the physical and psychic injuries claimed by Penny Polito's lawyer on both physical and psychic injuries. Mr. Dubinsky. While I understand that what I am asking you to accept, to some of you may even sound crazy, we will present evidence that Mrs. Polito does indeed have abilities that go beyond the comprehension of most of us. The doctors who had performed all seven operations backed Penny Polito's claims. This woman has some very strange and unreal abilities. He brought in the saw that was used to cut the bone out of my foot. This is a mock-up of the human foot. This is the left foot, which I operated on. Then using this, cut entirely through the bone. And he sawed through the bones to demonstrate what I must have been feeling and experiencing during the surgery. Things started to go wrong, however, when the DIY store's lawyer told the court about her operation a fortnight after the accident. As far as we're concerned, if she had that ability, she still has it. She's 
simply choosing not to use it. In his closing statement, he called her claims bizarre, absurd, and ridiculous. And there is no such thing as paranormal activity as she describes it and defines it. Thank you. The jury may now retire to consider the evidence and reach a verdict. And the jury reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, found that the plaintiff, Mrs. Polito, did indeed suffer physical injury as a result of an accident at Home Depot. However, we do not feel that she lost, has suffered any loss of her psychic powers. I read that the jurors believed that the power existed. I realized that the case wasn't totally lost, that the jurors believed me. I myself was truly convinced that she had some amazing abilities. She wasn't awarded damages for the loss of her psychic abilities because she really didn't prove that she had lost the abilities uh, due to the accident. That part for me was a victory because at least then I knew that jurors were convinced a power was real, it happened, it existed. Pain-blocking powers were tested as long ago as 1935 by a group from London University. They carried out an experiment in which an Indian man walked across hot coals at a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. He should have suffered agonizing burns, but he didn't. If we could find out how such things can happen, medical science could be on the verge of a major breakthrough. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>